Welcome to Mojo at the Movies. I'm Eric, and joining me today is our esteemed director, Manny. How you doing? Very good. How Thank are you? Good. I'm good. Uh, we should mention that if you like these kind of discussions, make sure to subscribe to Mojo Talks, because there's plenty more where that came from. But let's get right to the movie. Uh, last night, uh, we went to go see... Pacific Rim 2, Uprising. Uprising. Not Downrising, Uprising. Cadets, you better gear up. So the big question that we're asking here is, it, does it live up to the original Pacific Rim? Uh, Manny, you were a fan of the first one? I love the first one. Mm -hmm. I love Guillermo del Toro. Yeah. The only thing I didn't like from the first one was Charlie Hunnam. Oh yeah, okay. I yeah. thought you were gonna say Charlie Day. Charlie Day. No, was good. Charlie, Charlie Day okay. is awesome. He's the best in everything. I myself loved the first one as well. I had high hopes for this, um, and then I realized that El Toro is involved simply as like a producer, like in name only. In name only. Yeah. I feel like when you walk into this movie right away, you notice that it is not not a Del Toro movie. Not at 100%. all. One hundred percent. And that you get literally just by the way the first movie just in the first five minutes. Well, they give you like a, I feel like this movie is like kind of a soft reboot, yeah. but they're keeping what happened in the first one in the continuity, right, in the exactly. realm. So they're yeah. like, yeah, yeah, all these things happen. Look, all these things happen. Kaijus Del Toro are a made thing. a movie. Yeah, Del Toro made a movie. And we're running with it. Kaijus are a thing. Right. You know, like Jaegers are a thing. All that's still all here. So like, but it's different and it's new. How'd they get into our world? Someone let them in. Someone from our world. Well, let's just throw it out there. I, you liked it. I, I thought didn't it was like a it. great time at the movies. Yeah, I, you, I, I uh, hated when it. we walked out, you were a bit. Eesh. Directed by Stephen S. DeKnight, uh, who's known mostly for Spartacus, uh, like mostly TV stuff, and, and uh, season one of Daredevil on Netflix. Yeah, which he did a great job on. Yeah. No way is this guy an inferior director to Del Toro. I think he's great. You, you don't think he's inferior to Del Toro? Uh, in this movie? Mm -hmm. Probably. But as a director, That's a hot take. That is as a, hot, a director, hot take. I think he's he's good. I mean, his stuff is solid. His episodes of Spartacus were fun. His episodes of Daredevil were fun. Yeah, but you compare that to Pan's Labyrinth or Hellboy. I mean, you know, we're we're really but this also is different styles, oranges. different styles. Fair enough. Let's okay. let's let's different styles. Okay, fair <laughs> enough. We'll agree to disagree, but I'm right. Um, okay, so starring John Boyega, who plays Jake Pentecost. Great name, not as great as his father, yeah. played uh, in, the, in the first movie by Idris Elba. Uh, you have Scott Eastwood as well, uh, Charlie Day is back, uh, and a lot of big name Chinese actors who kind of have big yeah. parts in this movie. One of my favorite new additions was uh, Kaylee Spaney. Mm -hmm. I'm saying that terribly, but... The, the young girl. Uh, the uh, young girl in the movie. I thought she was really fun. I thought she brought like a cool little badass characteristic to her person, you know, personality-wise, it was fun. The way she interacted with John Boyega, I thought was really cool. See, I didn't think he was, like, I, I like Finn, but I just thought, thought right off the bat, this movie, the, the dialogue is supposed to be all like, zay, zay, zay. It's, it's, yeah. It's, it, and, and it ends up being clunky and not flowing well. Like, to me, as soon as I walked in, like you said, you're, it, this is clear, it's not the same movie, it's not the same team. Yeah, uh, but I think I was more expecting it to be a lot different from the first one, mm -hmm. just because I'm like, okay, so none of the original people are involved, only in name. So I guess maybe, you know, like whatever, we'll see how this goes. That's my new attitude walking into movies. With all the stuff we've seen and a lot of the disappointment I've experienced, or meh, I was uh -huh. like, you know what? I'm going to go in, I was going to eat my popcorn, but you ate it all. <laughs> So, you know, that's, true. Okay, that's fine. fine. Uh, okay, let's get to the, to, to the meat here, um, the, the kaijus and the Jaegers. Yeah. Um, my biggest problem is that, it, for example, in the first one, you really felt the heft of these creatures. You, I, was, I, I, was, I was in awe when I watched yeah. the first one because you can, you can feel their heft, you can smell the engine grease, you can, you can feel the, twisting, the, the steel yeah. twisting and yet in this one, everything was just so light and fluffy and CGI, yeah. and it felt more like a Transformers movie than it did a tribute to the old kaiju movies. Actually, Dan, uh, one of our hosts from uh, Mojo Plays, mm -hmm. when I spoke to him about the movie, he told me that the first movie had this overluring sense of danger all the time. Absolutely. That yeah. there was always a risk that stakes no were high. Say, stakes were high. Uh, in this movie, it's kind of like, they took care of that in the first movie, and in this one, they're all like, yeah, yeah, there's no more. It's kind of like just a training. Uh, everybody's here. We're training. We're kind of doing our thing. Uh, it's, there's no 
danger and when the moments come up where it's kind of dangerous, these characters have been so nonchalant the whole movie. So when shit hits the fan, it's kind of like, okay, they're most likely going to take care of it. Also, we've been watching this movie for an hour, so it's not going to be like... <laughs> <laughs> but it's just like, you know, when they're, you know, when they're trampling through the cities or when they're falling into the buildings. In the first one, I, that, that's exactly it. I got that sense of danger. There's people who are suffering. There's people in danger. Yeah. This was just, I guess, indicative of a lot of these giant... Uh, monster superhero movies of today where, you know, the collateral damage is just an afterthought and, and uh, you know, the screaming people like, ah, is and not... I, I think that speaks to Del Toro's directing style is mm -hmm. that he understands the monster movie and he understands yes. when you walk into one of these movies uh, as, a, as a cinema goer, you want to feel that danger and he depicts that perfectly. Yeah. Where I think other directors kind of don't get that and they kind of want to give you a visual spectacle. I mean... The fights in this movie are super cool. The hero shots of the Jaegers make sense. How they intercut the pilots working with the Jaegers. That I always liked. That, sure. was, that was really awesome. But again, I agree with you that, and I agree with Dan, that that sense of danger is not there in this movie. Is it a fun movie? Are you going to walk into this movie and be like, yeah, I was entertained. You know, like I could have went drinking and got hammered, but... You know, I saw this movie and uh, I'm content with my decision. It's a rather, fun, it's a fun time at the movies. I'd rather it's get hammered than one. see this movie. Um, I, uh, and and just to speak to your point about Del Toro, he is. You feel his reverence for monster movies yeah. in that first one and everything. I mean, even the Shape of Water, you exactly. know, is a tribute to the Creature from the Black Lagoon. Um, there's a reverence for what came before, whereas this movie to me feels more like. Uh, a mix of Transformers and Fast and Furious. It's it's quick disposable dialogue. The 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 monsters move in such a way that you know you're not you you don't feel like you're watching something that could literally come and crush you. It's it, there's a distance between you and the action. And uh, you know I I never understood why I didn't like Transformers movies because on paper it's great big huge robots that are fighting each other you know and and crushing things in the city. But something about it it's it's like there's a compression there's a there's a, there's a certain sense that it's just, it's, it's not surreal, it's just, it's not real. It's, it's, yeah. it's also fake. And the first one had a little bit more reality grounded in there. This one is uh, it's just pure fantasy without any, any stakes. Yeah, I find the stakes are missing in this movie. They build it up. It's kind of like a soft reboot. I feel that they kind of want to wrap up this trilogy and do all three of them. Maybe it'll do good at the box office. Maybe it won't. Is it fun? Yeah. Would I tell our viewers to, everybody's got to rush out and go see Pacific Rim? You're at the theater. You want to see it. Might Skip well the 3D. You'll Might as well sick. sneak in to see this after you've seen another movie. Man, <laughs> not that terrible. It's still kind of worth it. You're being a little tough. Uh, yeah, well, on. we need to, you know, a little tough love is important. <laughs> okay, uh, quickly, uh, Charlie Day. Um, everybody loves Charlie Day. Uh, you know, he, he brings... Uh, I, I feel like he's like, the studio walked up to him and said, hey come into Pacific Rim 2 mm -hmm. uh, and he's like yeah you know I'm not really a hundred percent on this maybe maybe not because him and the girl who was uh, Charlie Hunnam's co-pilot in the first one mm -hmm. they're the only two and one other scientist that come back from the first one and I feel like all of them kind of came back as like yeah sure we'll come on it's the sequel how but much are you paying us? how much are you paying us and we're kind of going to take these characters in the direction we want and I think that's how Charlie Day approached this movie. He was fun as always. He's always great to watch. He's a little bit more over the top than a little uh, bit more over the top. But that's he kind of falls into that supervillain category in right. this one. So well, and it's it'll be interesting fun. to see what happens next because clearly there's another one coming. Um, yeah, they set it up for a sequel. That's for sure. Yeah, exactly. And maybe it'll be the return. I don't think Del Toro is coming back to this. I, think I he, don't he, think he's no, coming exactly. back. I think he's content with just getting his check in the mail, and he's like, yeah. Thanks, thanks for my Pacific Rim money, and I'm cool, I'm out. What do we do? We fight! So for once, you and I disagree. Let us know what you think. Do you agree with me? Do you agree with Manny? Or do you not care at all? Either way, make sure to subscribe to Mojo Talks because we have plenty more discussions like this. Uh, and we'll catch you guys next time. Thanks, Manny.